hey guys what is up my name is Mpo and welcome back to another video it's been like what two weeks since my last video two three weeks well you know what I'm saying is that it's been a while and you know since then we've managed to move from 23 subscribers all the way to 97 it's pretty awesome in the last video I showed you guys how to light a car scene and you know for some time i've just been looking at different things that we can do based off of that video and i figured what better way than to create a cinematic car commercial you know what i'm talking about you've probably seen it on the internet somewhere so the first thing you're gonna need is a car that's pretty obvious right but let's say you don't have one or you're not willing to model it where do you start? Well, you know, the first place I'd recommend is Blendswap. It's just an awesome website that has materials, textures, scripts, assets, you know, just many things that you can use in Blender. I'll leave a link down in the description. So without wasting any of your time, let's get started. For this first sequence, I wanted to go for something dark, you know, a dark mood. Uh, but at the same time, I wanted to evoke some emotion. This gave me a chance to play with some color. And if you know me, you know that I love color. Um, I also added some mist in the background and with some camera movements, it just completed the whole scene. So let me show you how I did that. I'm just going to add in a camera and what i'm gonna do here let me just activate that zoom in what i want to show you is something with the camera um the the focal length to be specific not a lot of people know this some people do know this but yeah i don't see many people using this technique very well so have a look over here if you change this value to something like 25 or 24 um it gives it sort of a fisheye lens right i'm not sure if you've noticed this and if you increase that to about 200 tell me if you can see the difference all right it's kind of reminiscent of how photographers do photography um how they take their pictures and everything they use different lenses for different occasions so just be mindful of that right over here i want to um, animate the camera um, so I'm not sure if you've noticed, but in the video, I have um, a camera movement from the right to the left. So, yes, that's what I want to do right here. I'm going to add in a, a cube, just a cube um, that is going to block the view of the camera. And then from there, I'm going to animate the camera moving to the sides, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to scale that, move that up, split the view, and let's go into the top view just so we can see that a bit better. Grab that and then move that in front of the camera. Mm, I think maybe, maybe closer. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm just going to rotate that and bring it in front of the camera like so. Great. So the first part is done. Now we're going to grab the camera, move all the way to the last frame. And as I said, we're going to just grab the camera, move it forward a bit and to the side. Let me rotate that. And yeah, we're going to set a keyframe from that. I'm just going to move it a bit forward again, just, you know, to, to block out a good composition. Right, let's just rotate that and make sure that the car is in focus. So, if you now press I on your keyboard and select rotation and location, this will set a keyframe. Um, so, now if you have a look at the animation, this is what we have. You know, we're already getting closer to that desired result. Let's head over to the lighting. I've mentioned this a couple of times in my previous tutorials that soft overhead lighting is the key 
Um, I've seen it used a lot by photographers and huge studios, you know. This just gives it, I, I don't know what to say, but like it's just really amazing when you use soft overhead lighting. So let's give this a try. I'm going to set the shape to a rectangle so we could manipulate the X and Y sizes, you know, independently. All right, now let's have a look how this is. I think we might need to change the power. So I, I'll i select that and I'll change the value to 2000. Right, look at that. That soft overhead lighting which I was talking about. The next tip would be to play with color now. If you have a look at what we have in the scene, we have a green car. I'd like to experiment with something called the triadic color scheme. This is basically by um, using three colors which are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. So what I want to go for right here is a blue, green and orange color. So here's another trick which I feel like I learned a bit later in life. This is a spotlight. Um, which I added over here. I will use this to create some mist. So yes, as I mentioned about color, I want to use a triadic color scheme. So if you have a look at the color wheel over there, um, you know, green, blue, and orange are of equal distance to each other on the color wheel. So these tend to complement one another. All right, now for that mist, I've added in a cube over here, and if I rotate that, I want this to pretty much cover the whole of the spotlights, or maybe not even the whole of it, but just a portion of it. So, yes, if I grab these bottom parts and scale that up, all right, to something similar to that, I think this should be fine, and I'll grab the light and parent it to the cube. Let's go back to our scene and let's grab a look at how everything is going right now. And if you have a look, this is just, you know, a plain cube without a material. Um, we're going to need to change that. So selecting the cube into shade editor, I'm going to click new. And what I want to do is I want to delete this and insert a volume scatter. Volume scatter node, yeah. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to put that into the volume output, input, sorry. And I change the value to something small like 0 0.01. You might need to refresh it in the viewports, I find, using like Blender 2.9. I don't know why. It's just, you know, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, look at that. But like, I don't feel like it's enough. I want to, um, I don't know, I, I just don't feel like it's enough. So maybe scaling it down will work. Um, okay, it's kind of it's helping, but I feel like we can do better. So maybe I think this cube, if we go over into top view, and yeah, you see the mistake I done there? I didn't scale the whole portion of the bottom part. So if I go into wireframe mode, and let's select that and I will scale that up on the x-axis. You see now it looks so much better. And yeah, uh, I, th I think I'm enjoying this look. Let's now duplicate the slides. So I'll select these elements and shift D to duplicate. Rotate that and we'll have this face the front of the car and what I'm planning here is I want this light to sort of face the front part of the car specifically the wheel um, the rim of the car And using this we are going to experiment with that triadic color scheme recap this is three colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. 
so this is the blue which we have here the green and with this light we're going to change this to an orange light and look at that guys tell me that is not amazing that is pretty much it to be honest this is the first shot now we're gonna go in and have a look at how the animation looks for the second sequence we're gonna have a close-up animation where the camera moves in slightly but also rotating a bit to the side revealing the logo I won't go into the technical aspects of this one because I feel like it's something we've done before, you know, in the previous one and uh, the previous tutorials. So I'll just walk you through the process that I went to get this, um, this end result. With the camera selected, I want to tick this checkbox. And from here, we're going to animate the camera. So in order to do that, we're going to tick this one as well. And we're going to grab the camera. And this is going to create a keyframe. Move all the way to the end of the timeline. And we are going to navigate oh it seems like the the checkbox right just take that and we're going to zoom in and rotate a bit to the side what i want to do here is i want to focus on the logo like that so now if you have a look at the animation it should have something similar to what we're looking for and that is all I done for the scene in regards to camera animation. So I feel like next is time to move into the light setup. I'm just gonna untick that first. All right, for the light setup, I once again went for the panel lights. This is very easy to uh, make. So yeah, everything is just some panel lights i think the lights are set to 2000 each and what i wanted to do here was play with some different color contrasts and so on so yeah i once again i'll select these area lights i have that checked over there move it a bit and back to the end of the timeline and move it once again and this is going to animate these panel lights moving forward it gives it sort of like an effect so looking at the lights i have them set to a blue color which is opposite to the orange which is in the car With these two colors, I chose to go with something that is complementary, complements each other. And how you pick these two colors is on the color wheel, you look for two colors which are opposite each other on the color wheel. Very popular, you probably see this in cinematography, photography, and even painting sometimes. All right, now moving into the camera view, I want you to look at something. Looking at the scene right here, it does look a bit dark, especially here at the front of the car. It just seems like something is missing, right? You see that it's a light source and I did it deliberately just so you guys could see it. And in order to eliminate this problem or just to make the scene look a bit better, I added in a light source. Um, it's just a soft light set to a low value just so you could highlight that front car um, that front part of the car that logo 
to make things just slightly a bit more readable, a bit more visible. That'll be it for this tutorial. With pretty much the same techniques that I showed you, you can make up a bunch of scenes. Like I was able to make this one, where the lights go on and off. And I was also able to make this scene that has camera movements and lights going off. I'd encourage you to check out BlendSwap and download some assets that you see on there, whether it's another car or anything, you know, and try it out, make something cool and share it with everyone. That will be all for me today. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, that like, comment, <laughs> dislike if you don't like it, you know, um, yeah, do the right thing. And I'll be seeing you in the next episode. Peace.